Hi everyone. During these challenging times, all of us have been trying to do everything possible to keep ourselves safe and healthy, both physically and mentally. But today being International Yoga Day, we decided to go one step further and discuss about how crucial yoga has become during the pandemic and also how yoga can help us deal with the pandemic better. For the discussion, we have invited over Ms. Rohini Manoha, the founder of Chennai Yoga Studio. She is an internationally certified yoga teacher and has practiced yoga for 12 years in Australia, Malaysia and India. We welcome you, Ms. Rohini. I'm very grateful that I can still teach in times like this and share the love of yoga that is very deeply in me. And as you rightly said, in times like this, I do notice that there are more and more people gravitating to yoga. So I'm feeling very grateful. All right. So can you tell us how yoga is being perceived by people at this point of time? I think the reason why a lot of people are gravitating to yoga is because it is not just physical health. And at times like this, when the pandemic is going on, there's so much uncertainty. People need a kind of comforting in the mental, physical, emotional, and even the spiritual level. No other form of movement. I won't call it an exercise because that's dumbing it down. It's not exercise. It's so much more. But there is no other form of movement that caters to these four needs. Most exercises cater with maybe just giving you a good body. But nothing caters to your mental health or your emotional well-being or your spiritual health. Are you feeling like you are part of this world? Are you feeling really like, I don't know where I'm going. But yoga is beautifully answering all those elements and it is why people are looking into it and wanting to get into it so i think it's perceived almost as this um, as this savior um, in times like this absolutely yes yes that's very true so but, but despite having a lot of people watching yoga videos or reaching out to yoga studios it can still be seen that a lot of people fail to practice yoga on a regular basis so uh, could you like tell us what exactly is stopping them from practicing yoga regularly the answer is actually very simple we all know what is healthy food yet when we're tired what do we do we swiggy our ways to pizzas and burgers and junk it's not that we don't know. Everyone knows what's good. Everyone knows yoga is beneficial. We lack the willpower. So the question you're really asking is, why do people lack the willpower to commit to it at home? And the answer is simple. We've built an environment that is not conducive. If you stayed with me and we were roommates, you would automatically start getting healthy because you'd be like, oh my God, that girl's always eating healthy. Oh my God, she's always practicing. So you sort of the environment assists in helping you stick to a goal. Most of our environments don't help us. They are the exact opposite. We layer the environment with enough junk food. We layer the environment with enough Netflix and WhatsApp and YouTube. So these kind of take a back seat. So it's, it's, if you want to commit to something, the key is setting up an environment. It's why, you know, from a very long time, they say, if you want to exercise, go out with a friend. Because the friend keeps you accountable. So it's setting up the environment. So that's the reason why. Um, even as parents, even as a child, I'm sure, right? If your mother told you do something, you're like, why? You're not doing, why should I do? The environment was not set. But on the other hand, if your mama was somebody that went for a run every day, she did yoga religiously, she ate healthy, you'd automatically choose to take on the habit. So set the environment, the habit will automatically. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was like, the perfect answer, like the perfect solution to all of our problems. So yes, so uh, next, like we all know like how everything is being shifted to online these days and definitely yoga is no exception. So can you tell us about your experience of taking yoga online? It's been a challenge as a teacher. I really enjoy being, being able to see a person. There is always um, stuff that we don't communicate with our faces, but we communicate with our bodies. It's, you could be really upset and I, the screen kind of doesn't let me tap into that emotion, you know. But if somebody is upset and they're walking through the room, you'll automatically catch it. You know something is off. So that element of knowing somebody is no longer possible on the screen. 
But that said, um, it is also giving me access to people who are way beyond the geographical boundary of Chennai. So it's pros and cons. The teaching world was a challenge, but now it's become a bar in the sense I'm able to reach out to a lot more people than I would in my physical studio space. There's a lot more people abroad across India that I wouldn't have been able to help. Even if it's one dimensional, it's still reaching out and helping each other at times like this. So mostly grateful, sometimes wishing I could see them in person. But hey, this is what this world is like. Uh, the teaching element of it was interesting because I'm trying to understand everything about you through this one screen. Uh, but if I see you in person, there's so much more you will understand about the human being. So the relationship is also something that builds because I'm as a teacher, I love to build relationships with my student and be there for them when they need me. So that element of it took a lot of creativity, a lot of asking, hey Mira, are you doing okay? You seem like you are not connected in today's class. So this is the extra effort that we go through as teachers to make sure our students are doing really well. So it's in some ways it's beneficial, it's great. In other ways, uh, I also miss seeing people face to face. Yeah, it's definitely been challenging, yes. But it has brought out the better version of ourselves, right? Yeah, like you, like you say, you know, everything has a plus and a minus. And instead of could have been, as I said, I'm feeling really grateful that I can still teach at a time like Exactly. Like now coming to the most important question, in what ways can yoga help us deal with COVID-19? So you must understand some of the symptoms that have earlier been seen in COVID is what? Cold, cough, body pain. And then when it hits the lungs, it's a really bad thing. Cold, cough, body pain you have dealt with at some point of time in your life. So your body knows how to recover. Lungs your body is not used to. Correct? You've never had any issue with your lungs, so your body doesn't know. And so at times like this, it's really important to work your lungs to be at their best capacity. And how you know whether your lungs are at the best capacity is knowing how you breathe. Right? If you see a cat or a dog, it breathes very quickly. Kutti breaths. Yeah? Oh. And hence why they live smaller lives. Our breath is actually connected to our, our lifespan and even our lifestyle. So when our breath automatically, when we are under stress also, you will start noticing your breathing really short. When you are angry and hyperventilating, they call it hyperventilating, which is breathing. And you, oh my God, you're breathing fast. Yeah? When you're sad also, you'll be like that because you're scared or sad. So breath plays a very big role in emotion. Breath plays a very big role in lifespan. So yoga beautifully focuses on matching breath in the pranayamas itself that we teach. But even in the asanas that we do practice, the physical movements, it is always to match movement to breath. And this is what we see, right? When you climb two flights of stairs, if you're feeling really tired, oh my God, I can't climb. Your breath is not matching body movement because your lungs are not able to take movement. So what about increasing the capacity of the lungs such that nothing affects it? Now that's what yoga works on. It increases the immunity of your lungs. So your respiratory and your cardiovascular system. So that no matter what stress, stress can be from a virus, stress can be from the family members, stress can be from any form, right? Uh, no matter what the stress comes to you, you're able to handle it with a lot of calm. So that's how yoga really helps in times like this. Because it's more than just the virus. A lot of people are stuck with in, ha in homes and they're having issues with family members. You know? Normally they'd be like, okay, be quiet. I'm going out for a walk. I'll come back to you. You can't do that anymore. So in situations like this, it's also the emotional health. And anyone, when the emotions are really down, you'll actually get sicker. A happy person is never a sick person. You've noticed it. But a sad person will automatically be a sick person. So with a lot of this negative stuff that's going on, some in some people, I'm not saying everybody, um, it's, it kind of brings about with it other illnesses. So yoga helps, in, as I said before, in physically in expanding your lungs and making the cardiovascular system really strong and keeping your muscles and your body really good um, and also helps in the emotional uh, state of the mind that you feel healthy, you feel strong. You feel like no matter what challenge life is deciding to throw at you today, it's okay, chalo, I will handle it well. So. That was like a very interesting perspective on the whole, like 
thank you so much for such insightful answers ms rohini and it is such a pleasure having you with us today rohini here is an extremely passionate yogini and she is a huge inspiration for anyone and everyone stepping into the world of yoga apart from the regular yoga classes chennai yoga studio offers yoga workshops yoga retreats and also corporate yoga classes do check out their online zoom yoga asana classes which can prove extremely useful at this point of time thank you so much once again ms rohini for joining us today i am so glad i was given this opportunity to interview you also we would really appreciate if you could uh, demonstrate a few yoga asanas that can help us boost our immunity I'm going to teach you variations of one very beautiful simple pranayama called Kapalabhati. Kapala means prefrontal lobe of the brain and bhati means enlightening, okay? So what it looks like is as you place your hands on your knees, you keep your spine tall always and you focus purely on the exhale. So the breath will sound like this. And every time you exhale, your belly moves in. We're going to do one cycle going all the way to about 20 breaths alone. Okay, you're going to do it with me. So ready? Close your eyes. Keep your spine tall. Sharp inhales. And begin. Whenever you finish your 20, just let the body be still, let the eyes stay closed. You should feel a buzzing, tingling sensation within you, a physical change. It's the movement of energy. It's also dubbed the yogic facial for great skin and also to increase memory power. Kapalabhati is the best pranayama. In your time, practice it at least three rounds of 20, 40, 60, whatever you can, all the way up to 100. I'm going to teach you one more variation, which is the alternate nostril Kapalabhati. You'll come into Vishnu Mudra on the right hand, second and third finger rolling in. With the thumb, you'll shut the right nostril. You will inhale through the left and exhale. Continuously. If you're wondering where the inhalation happens in slow motion, it's like inhale, exhale. In the gap, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So faster, it would be like. So on and so forth. You want to try and practice at least 20 on your left, 20 on your right, trying to bring a balance between the left and the right brain, the masculine and the feminine sides of the body, and bringing a more cohesive way of being versus just being dominated to one side or the other. Practice it at home and leave a comment about how you feel after. Thank you.